Uh, welcome to the Landon Center, everyone. Thanks for being patient. Uh, today we have Jamie and Monica. They're from uh, Wyandotte County and the uh, Kansas City, Missouri PACE programs, and they're going to talk about each one today. And I'm just going to turn it over to Jamie first. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Um, so, as Matt said, um, this I'm Jamie with Midland Care PACE, and I do the intake for. Um, Wyandotte, and then um, also now Johnson in Miami counties. Um, the PACE program is for people 55 and over who um, need a little bit of extra help staying in their home uh, and you know maintaining that independence as long and as much as possible. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and start the uh, PowerPoint there, Matt. And I don't know if you're able to share your screen so I can see that perfect. Thank you. Um, I think that's Monica's. Oh, let me get the other one here. <laughs> but too many. Stop shooting. Uh, oh. Let me get yours open again. You're good. Do you want me to do the first one, Matt? No, oh, I have it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, just kind of a little bit of brief background on Midland Care. We started as a hospice in the Topeka area um, over 40 years ago in the uh, in the 70s, and um, we expanded our programs and services to include the PACE program, which is Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly in 2007. Now that was just uh, Shawnee and Douglas counties. And we have since grown um, to the Kansas City area as well. So we opened our Kansas City Center in 2016. Um, and then our first enrollment was in January, 2017. And we have just continued to grow. Um, next slide, please. Um, if do you guys want to pull up that video to watch? It's kind of um, it's an informational video on PACE, and it has some of our actual participants in there and kind of explaining what it is. I don't know if you're able to pull that up for them to be able to hear it as well. Is it, are you, is it going on your guys' end? It's going here. Can you guys hear it? I can't, but that's fine. I, uh -uh. I, I'm guessing, not in the recording. I'm guessing, yeah, because of, okay. We cannot see it online. Uh, no, I can't see it. Okay. You'll probably have to change to share that screen as well. Yeah. And then the audio. Fitting my family, my character. My father, Ricardo Hernandez. Do you hear it now? He's been a member of the yes. program for about Yes. Yes. You might want to start it over, though, for the I'm online the people. Because this was the... My name is Ray Hernandez, and this is my father, Ricardo Hernandez. And he's been a member of the PACE program for about eight months now. We put him into the PACE program because this was the only thing available that we found that would have helped my family and helped him. Uh, to uh, actually take care of them. And they just turned out to be a great, great thing that we did. 
quería. Por eso es la comida sobre todo. Y the food, he loves the food. <laughs> yeah. He says he loves the food. ¿Qué más? ¿Hay otra cosa? Bueno, me gusta la televisión. Uh -huh. Me gusta el ambiente, la amabilidad de la gente. He says, oh, he, that's one thing he really likes. He says he likes the food and how pleasant the people are. He benefited my family, my caretaker at home, because she works in the daytime. And that's what she was needing, is someone to be able to take me and let me be there all day. And I have enjoyed myself since I've been here. And I've come a long ways. They kept up, you know, like I said, they kept up my therapy and working with me. And I've been walking now a week and um, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm seeing a success in myself with their help. I'm very happy. You know, like I said, when I first came here, I was walking with a crutch. And uh, now I couldn't even climb them stairs. I wouldn't even think about trying to climb them or even climb down them. But now I can go up them and go down them every time I go up to, uh, for my therapy and stuff. And after, after we get through the therapy every day at 12 o'clock, we right here in this room uh, exercising, you know, looking at you no know, different videos, doing all kind of different exercise stuff. So, like I said, they, they get you in shape, that's for sure. I am blessed to have both Parkinson's and diabetes, and so uh, the three months before I joined Pace, I had a very substantial deterioration in my physical abilities. And uh, since I have joined PACE, I have not had any, or I don't detect any significant further deterioration. So, so I'm going forward and without going downward. And to me, that's a major victory. And I'll just wait uh, to bring the PowerPoint back up there, Matt. All right, let me go to the next slide there. So a history on PACE, it started in California with the Asian population because culturally it was not, not acceptable to put a loved one in a nursing home. And so um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services kind of picked up on this program and found that it was a way for them to really kind of uh, save money and still kind of take credit for people staying healthy longer. Um, oh, hold on just a second. Um, and so currently there are now 163 organizations in the country uh, throughout the US and there are now more than 300 uh, day centers nationwide. And we are now in 32 states, which now includes Missouri, as Monica will talk about later. Um, and Midland Care started our programs, uh, as mentioned in 2007, when uh, the state agency, when Kansas uh, state agency, uh, KDADS reached out to us. And then our current service areas, which this will be exciting to hear since it's been kind of a common thing uh, in question in the past, but we are in uh, in the Kansas City area, we're Wyandotte and Leavenworth counties, but we are now also enrolling people for Johnson, Miami, and Franklin counties. So um, we are able to serve more people and that does uh, expand obviously our, our area and we, as we continue to grow. Um, so I know in the past, that's been kind of some of the things the attendees to this meeting have asked about is when it would be in Johnson County and it is now. So. 
Um, you can, if anybody's interested for Johnson County, you can certainly reach out to me. Uh, next slide. So the purpose of PACE is like I, like I previously said, it's you know, to help people stay independent and in their homes in the community as long as possible. Our goal is to help keep them in the community and, um, and as, medic as long as that's medically and socially fe feasible. And then we are also like the son mentioned in the video, we're able to help support the family member members or other support systems of the individual who comes on. And then we like to enhance the quality of life and autonomy um, for the frail, frail and older adults. So um, by doing that, you know, we get them uh, out of out of isolation or um, where their medication maybe aren't managed properly or they um, are depressed or they don't have really uh, anybody that can help them with some of those basic things that maybe they can't do any longer because of either just age or certain disabilities. And so it really improves that quality of life for them. Uh, next slide. And so to be eligible, you do have to be over the age of 55 and you have to reside in a county or service area that has the program. And then you have to be able to live in a community setting without jeopardizing the, the health and safety of themselves. And then, um, for my pro for for my my program, uh, you have to be determined by the state or by KDADS to meet the nursing home level of care, which is basically just stating that you need a little bit of extra help in order to stay in the home and maintain that independence. And um, and that's also just uh, the state's way of making sure I'm not bringing just anybody on just to bring them on, but that they really do have those needs and meet that um, criteria. Uh, next slide. So we are actually the fourth plan under CanCare, under Kansas Medicaid. There is Aetna, Sunflower, and United Healthcare, and then there is PACE. However, uh, CanCare doesn't really say much about the PACE program uh, because it's not available to every county and it's not available, available to every age group. So there's really only one tiny little question on the application about PACE, and that's kind of it. They don't really um, advertise it for anybody. Uh, next slide. So enrollment to the PACE program, it is voluntary, uh, but uh, they do have to meet those eligibility requirements that we went over previously. And then they have to agree to receive all their so services from the PACE organization and the contracted providers. So uh, for example, that we would become primary care, but like any specialist that somebody sees at KU or Providence uh, or any other contracted provider, would still be would be the same. So they would still be able to see those same providers, uh, just like any other insurance, you'd have to just see in-network providers. And then if the individual does decide that they want to enroll into PACE and has been approved by everybody, then uh, that is when the individual will sign the enrollment agreement with me and kind of go over all the other information that comes with PACE once enrolled. Uh, next slide. And the uh, enrollment, it, it continues as long as the individual would like, uh, even if there are some health changes that re will require them to go into a nursing home uh, once they're on the program or until death or until either they decide to disenroll or uh, due to possible behaviors or different things uh, involuntarily disenroll. Uh, but it takes a lot for us to get to that point to involuntarily disenroll somebody. Uh, some of the reasons that people would usually uh, do the voluntary disenrollment is because they're moving out of the out of a service area, or if they want to, they don't like the nursing home facility that we may be contracted with and wants want to go to a different one. Uh, next slide, um, and you can do all those there. Um, I think that's, yeah. So the PACE interdisciplinary team or IDT consists of the primary care physician and uh, nurse practitioners, social work, uh, restorative therapy. So all physical, occupational or speech therapy is included. Uh, we have transportation and uh, that is to and from all appointments and as well to our day center. We have uh, RN or registered nurse care managers 
we will have personal care attendants. We have, uh, which it's not on here, but the clinic nurse as well. We have PACE center administrator or site, site manager. And then life uh, enrichment or life enhancement, which is kind of basically the activities director. And that's usually at the day center. Uh, we have dietitian and then we have home care coordinator uh, as part of the program. You uh, also get home care if that's needed. Um, next slide. Um, so the day center is, uh, it. that's where people can go to socialize if they need to. Um, that's where people can go, say, if they have a family member who works and they need somebody to care for the, the individual and their family who's on our program uh, for safety reasons or whatever that may be, then we have it for that as well. And then also that's where they see the providers as well as uh, physical and occupational therapy. Um, it's, it also gives us the opportunity to have eyes on the individual just to kind of help maintain that whatever that health status is or catch any pro possible declines or problems before they get too severe. Um, and then not everybody comes to the day center. It is voluntary. The only time you have to come is when you need to see the provider or the physical or occupational therapy, but it's not mandatory to come every day. You can come once a week, twice a week, as needed, et cetera. Um, and then there are uh, some, for some of the areas that don't have, uh, that aren't close to the PACE day centers, then we do, uh, we are working on like different kind of satellite locations that people can go to that we may contract with. So that way they can still uh, benefit from that socialization aspect of it. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and so the services, we uh, agree to accept a capitated or um, just a specified rate from Medicare and Medicaid that will cover all of our services. And we must be able to provide and cover all of those needs, no matter what the amount may be. If it's over what we get, we still have to provide those services. Um, and that's going to include you know, basically anything um, that would be normally uh, um, approved through Medicare and Medicaid plans. Um, next slide. So some of the services we have, the uh, assessments, and those uh, are the initial one prior to coming on. And then within the first 30 days, the full initial assessment with the team. And then every six months after that, we do reassessments. And uh, of course the primary care, social work, the therapies, the day center, uh, we do help with meals as well. And then of course the nutritional or diet dietary counseling. Um, we do have telehealth and lifeline, which is that, you know, I've medical alert button or I fall in and I can't get up type of thing. Um, the recreational therapy, which would be the day center, of course. And then um, any specialties that the, that the individual needs. We do cover all their medical, dental, vision, uh, mental health, hearing, uh, we do have addiction support as well, if that's needed, the transportation, um, any labs or x-rays, anything like that, all medications that are needed. Um, if they do need to be in the hospital, we do uh, provide that as well. And the nursing facility, well, whether that be just as a, on a rehab or a skilled basis or actually long-term, and then uh, personal care and uh, support. Um, next slide. So um, as we mentioned, you know, we are the fourth plan under can care. So uh, there are a few different ways that we are paid for services. Uh, next slide. And so these are the four different ways. There's dual eligibility, which would be Medicare and Medicaid. Um, and that doesn't pay anything that you indiv individual doesn't usually pay anything. Medicare only, and then the, the individual would pay the Medicaid portion. Medicaid only and uh, individual individual doesn't have anything to pay for that or private pay, which and they would pay for the Medicare and Medicaid portions. I will say in my area specifically, I've never had anybody private pay and uh, overall for Midland Care for all of our counties that we have, 97% uh, of our people don't pay anything at all. Um, and if you do pay anything, for so it's basically a client or monthly obligation, which is basically the same as what you'd pay for a premium. You don't have any deductibles, any copays, or anything like that once you're on the program. So if you do have 
you know, a client obligation of say a hundred dollars, that is all that you would pay. You wouldn't have a deductible to meet or any like co-insurance or uh, co-pays for medic medications or medical supplies. It's all covered under PACE. Um, next slide. So we are considered a capitated managed care plan. Um, and so that is where we, once we submit the information to the state, uh, they kind of will determine how much we are needed to receive for that person to provide the care per month. And that's what we would get paid uh, by Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services every month to provide that. And again, whether or not that, you know, that's enough or not, that's not the individual's problem. That's something we still have to care to, um, to cover no matter what. So if somebody has a drastic change in care or needs, you know, one month, you, we, and it's a lot more of what, than what was originally planned, we still have to figure out how to provide those services and those needs. Um, next slide. Um, and then you do not receive a, uh, a monthly actual medical ID card or anything uh, because it we cover everything. And so you will get kind of a, a regular card like you would get any for any insurance, but it's not like a monthly thing. Um, and when we schedule appointments like with any providers, outside providers, we provide all that information to them for billing. So since you really won't receive, you should not receive any bill for anything that we're um, approving, then you don't have to really worry about having an insurance card because we're sending you to the person and we are providing the medication. So there really wouldn't be any need for it unless like an emergency or something. Um, next slide, please. So uh, for, for our uh, assessments, that those assessments that, the, that KDADS requires to uh, make sure that the individual is a nursing home level of care uh, level uh, is the Age and Disability Resource Center. That's who the state contracts with um, as they're a neutral or unbiased party. Um, and they see people for all, all the different programs available and all different income levels. Uh, next slide. So the process of joining PACE is the informational meeting and intake, which would be with me. Um, and then once I meet with the individual and the individual decides, yes, I wanna move forward and I agree that they're appropriate for the program, then um, I would present them to our team and the team would then reach out and do their own, uh, those IDT assessments to confirm that, yes, we are able to meet those needs and yes, they are, uh, safe in the in the environment in their home environment and appropriate for the program uh, and then once they enrolled they do like i said have that initial uh assessment and that is where they will also establish the plan of care and then um we meet month or we meet every morning and go over any any calls that may have come in overnight or any upcoming appointments or any issues that you know we may be concerned about for somebody uh, anything like that. And then the reassessments are every six months and that will be, we'll review whether or not we were able to meet any goals or anything that was that were in the current plan of care and then make any changes to that plan of care that are needed. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then that's our contact information as well as uh, the PACE intake email. If you would like to uh, have somebody come out and do an intake or just answer some questions, you can send an email there. And then it has our website and then also the uh, National Pace Association website is there as well. And I think that's all for mine. All right. And I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything. Do we want to do those now or just go ahead and do those after Monica? Uh, whenever you want. Does anyone have a question? Oops. I do. Go ahead. Um, hi, um, I'm Myra. I'm the social worker here at the Landon Center. And I was curious, and, and maybe you can't really help me understand, but the, the, the private pay of the Medicaid portion, because everybody we see has Medicare, but not everybody has Medicaid. Right. So I don't understand how, how that works exactly or, or what, like what's the cost, the Medicaid portion? So um, it, it depends on age. So 
uh, as I mentioned, most people I see don't have uh, anything. And a lot of people don't realize how much more the protected income is now in Kansas compared to what it used to be. So many people qualify for Medicaid and don't know it, or they don't know how to apply for it because it can be somewhat overwhelming and confusing. And so uh, that's part of the things that we go over when we do our initial intake assessment with them. We go over all of that and let them know, you know, if, if you decide to come on, this is what you would pay every month. And we decide then if that's, you know, we look at the different pros and cons and figure out what's going to be the best option for them. Okay. Uh, I will never have somebody come on just to have somebody come on so I can have another number. If it's going to be a huge burden financially, then it's not worth it. Uh, yeah. But sometimes people are paying, you know, $400 for their different equipment and their medications and their visits. And, you know, you may only have to pay 150 for your your client obligation for PACE. So you're going to be saving money with that. Other people may be only paying, you know, $50 for their things and then might have to pay $500 for their med for the client obligation. So it really varies. And, um, and the good thing is we have our own separate Medicaid workers. So I don't have to go through CanCare Clearinghouse. I don't have to call them ever. We have our own system where we upload everything directly to them. We have their cell phone numbers. We communicate with them at least a few times daily and they work our applications much faster. So oh. usually about a, a week or two is how long it takes for my Medicaid applications to get um, processed. Oh, wow. And one more quick thing. Is there anybody that maybe that their healthcare is so great or costly that they're not approved? Um, now there are a few people um, and and so, so some situations would be, you know, like they may have a really good Medicare Advantage program that they got a really good rate on because of who their employer was. And so we really look at that and see uh, if, if the individual were to say, come on to PACE and they want to disenroll, will they be able to get that same rate to go back onto that same program if they disenroll? And if they say yes, then that's great. If they say no, then that's something we really do look at again and see, is this going to be worth it for you to go ahead and lose that rate and stay on the pace? Or um, is this going to be kind of, maybe we can see what other resources might be available to you that we don't, that we don't know about um, and kind of go from there. Thank you. And now I will say VA benefits, they do not lose their VA benefits if they come on to pace. Um, they just have to, and we'll take them to those appointments at the VA if they'd like. They just have to actually schedule those uh, appointments. But the VA loves it because they get to count them on their census um, and not have to pay for anything. So they get paid for that person, but they don't actually have to do much. Um, and the Kansas City participants love it because, as we all know, the Kansas City VA is not the fastest or best uh, system to work with. So they love that they actually get to still keep that that uh, benefit that many of them are very proud to have, but not have to go through all the hoops and hassles and everything that usually come with the, working with the Kansas City VA. Thank you, Jamie. Any other questions? All right, right. We have a question in the room here. Go ahead, Lois. Yeah. So the PACE program uh, circumvents the insurance that a person has? We become the insurance, yes. So we become all the different uh, Medicare part, you know, A, B, D, all that stuff. We become that. And then um, if Medicaid as well, then we become the Medicaid. Um, what's, what's good about that is we become, like I said, primary care and insurance. So what's wonderful about that, and I don't know how many of you have had to deal with, uh, you know, needing to have a prior authorization or anything like, bef you know, uh, before anything will be covered by insurance which can sometimes take, you know, two weeks, whether that be for home health needs or for a certain medication. With PACE, that goes away because we're the ones who are prescribing it and paying for it. So if we say you need it, we just get it to you, for you. You don't have to worry about insurance saying, no, well, let's try this first or let's do this first and, you know, or just flat out no. So that's one of the biggest pros uh, is that, that wait time is gone and those battles and hurdles are gone uh, for those things. Mm 
All right, Monica. Okay, great. Great job, Jamie. Um, so um, I'm Monica Hudson. I am the Director of Outreach and Enrollment for the Pace KC location um, in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, Swope Health Services is our parent company, and this new location is five years in the making. So it's, it's brand new to Jackson County, so we're very excited. Um, others who have been as Jamie said, awaiting this program's arrival are, are very excited. And uh, so um, just just thank you all for allowing us to do this presentation um, to you today. So a lot of my presentation um, is going to already have been covered by Jamie. So I'm going to just more focus on um, just the PACE KC and not the PACE overall program itself. Um, so we do cover um, uh, Jackson County. And so as, as Matt has there, PACE does stand for the Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. Um, our program, as I told you, is the first and only PACE provider in Jackson County, Missouri. There's only uh, one other PACE in Missouri, and that is in St. Louis. So this is, is really a big deal. This is really a big deal um, for the seniors um, here in Jackson County. So um, you can go to the next slide, please, Matt. And on to the next one. Okay, so as Jamie said, um, PACE is a one-stop shop. As you can see that we become the primary care, um, the outpatient and the specialty services, the lab x-ray, the hospital care, emergency prescriptions, everything that you see there on the screen, uh, PACE is able to provide for you, um, as well as, as Jamie said, unlimited occupational physical therapy, rec recreational therapy, unlike what you have with your managed care or your, your Medicare um, Advantage plans, which you know have limits. They have limits to how much therapy that you can receive, um, but you don't have that uh, with PACE. You do not have that. Whatever the IDT team in your plan of care says that you need is what you will receive with the PACE program. So it is a very unique model of care. We're fully aware of that. Um, okay, next slide, please. So as Jamie said, you have to be 55 or older, um, live in the pay service area, and be certified to need a nursing home level of care, and also able to live safely in the community uh, with the pay support. Now in Jackson County, um, as you can see, there are tons and tons of what we call PACE eligible enrollees. And by 2025, we project that number to be greater than 3,297 people. Next slide. Okay, um, let's see here. So <clears throat> we kind of put this one together just to kind of give you a window into some of the care needs that the typical PACE participant receives. Um, as you can see, um, about 5.8 have a chronic condition, 46% have dementia, um, in an average month, nine, nine uh, will need prescriptions. There will be about eight visits to the PACE Center, 10 personal care contacts, and then about four uh, physical and occupational therapy um, encounters. But the biggest number I want you to see is that 95% of PACE participants are able to live in the community. Um, and, that, and that's an awesome number. That is an awesome number. So, yes. So, Matt, if you would, if you would go down uh, about three more slides there for me. Okay. And then you can go on to the last one. Okay. So, we want to tell you, like, how to, how to reach us um, because um, there, there are several ways. You can either give us a call at 816-321-3200. Again, I'm Monica Hudson, Director of Outreach and Enrollment. I have two enrollment specialists that work on my team, uh, Johnny Sherman and T. Amber Hodge. One of us will answer that call. You can also email us. Uh, we have two emails. One of them is just my own personal email of mhudson at pacekc.org. And the, the next one is info at pacekc.org. You can also um, email us there. My personal cell phone number um, that you can reach me at is 816-947-1781.
If you have any questions um, after this presentation that we don't answer for you today, feel free to reach out to us. But one more thing I wanted to point out uh, before we end uh, this presentation is that different than the Kansas side, my team on the Missouri side, we actually do the level of care assessments ourselves in the home. So we go into the home and we're looking at things that would affect like your ADLs, your activities of daily living, what you're able to do within your home, uh, what you need assistance with and things like that. And in the state of Missouri, you need to score 18 or more. Um, to, to actually qualify according to the state specifications. And again, either me or one of my team members will actually come out and meet with you to do that, that assessment. Now, the assessment can last generally about an hour to an hour and a half, uh, depending on how many questions that you all would have for us while in the home. But again, just a little different than Kansas, we do do the level of care assessments ourselves um, on the Missouri side. Um, another thing I would like to invite you all to do is to contact us for a center tour. We have a beautiful, brand new state-of-the-art facility that we just opened the doors on March the 1st. So we are brand, brand new. And we would love for you all to just come and to take a tour of the facility. If anyone would need transportation for that tour, you can give me a call. And all we would need is about a 24-hour notice and we'll be more than happy to send our PACE van to pick you up so that you can come and see our beautiful facility and um, meet the members of the IDT team who would be providing that personal um, care uh, for you all. So um, again, I'm Monica Hudson. I'm the Director of Outreach and Enrollment for the PACE KC. Um, we are located right next to Swope Health, which is our parent company, about two buildings down at 4141 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in Kansas City, Missouri, and at our zip code is 64130. Again, I can be reached at 816-321-3200 or 816-947-1781, which is my cell phone number. So um, again, it's been a pleasure to present to you all today. Um, we hope that you would, um, you know, consider us, you know, for your care. If it's not for yourself, then maybe for a, a friend or a family member who could benefit from the services that PACE has to offer. Um, so that will end my presentation. And if you all um, have any questions, uh, please just let us know at this time. Any questions while we have Monica and Jamie? I didn't have a question, but I just wanted to say I visited the new Pace location and it was beautiful. Really, really nice. I, I was impressed. Um, so if That's anybody nice. has a chance to tour it, it, it's really a nice facility. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It, yeah. Glad you got to see it. Yep. Yep. It's a beautiful state of the art facility. Uh, and we are currently at 8th and Ann in downtown KCK, but we um, will be moving hopefully within the year to uh, a little bit out west. And then, of course, once our facilities are built and open, uh, you know, in like southern Johnson County and stuff. So I have a question. During the daytime, if someone is enrolled, how do they generally spend their daytime? Now, where do they go for, like, if they want to have quiet time or privacy, are they always in a quiet, in a community setting? So um, at the day center, you mean like if they're at, with our day center? Yes. Okay. So uh, we do, and so for, for Midland Care, we do have, so at the day center, we do different activities. We do have outings or field trip type things, and then they get breakfast and lunch. Um, and then if it is something where they need either some quiet time or they just kind of, it's, you know, a little overwhelming or too much for them, uh, we do have our, our low stimulus room. And so that's somewhere they can go where it's quiet. There's not usually anybody really in there. Um, there's also some couches where some of them like to just kind of lay down and take a nap. And so that is always an option as well. If they, you know, just don't want to be around a lot of people, but they do need to be somewhere secure during the day, then that is an option. 
And, and for our facility, um, Pace KC, uh, we do have several options. Um, we have a, a beautiful lounge area with double fireplaces um, that is very um, almost secluded. We have a library that if you want to sit down and just read a book and enjoy quiet time uh, there for yourself, um, we do have that. Like Jamie said, we also do have a, a low stimulation area for our memory care and our Alzheimer's um, patients. So uh, we have an out outdoor patio um, that if you just want to sit outside um, and enjoy the beautiful weather um, on the outdoor patio. But there are um, our day center will hold 120 participants um, at a time. But we have about seven spaces, including um, a media room, where if you just want to go in and watch your favorite afternoon show, um, you can do that um, on a big screen TV. We have three large projection screens in our activity room. But to answer your question specifically, we have about five areas that you can yes. um, resort to um, if you, you know, need to do that. And if you're in Johnson County, you can't go to Swope. You have to go to the facility in Johnson County or close by to Johnson County. Is that correct? That's correct. Correct. You yeah. Okay. Yep. You have to go to the one Thank that you. is in, in your county. Yep. In your, your service county. area. Yep. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Susan. Any other questions? All right, Monica and Jamie, thank you very much. Everybody have a nice day. Thank, thank you. Have a wonderful, have a wonderful day. Guys. day. Okay, bye-bye.